So hi, everybody. Um, well, this was meant to be config 1 to 100. Hi, Justin, waving to me from the back. Um, this is meant to be config 1 site to 100 sites, but it's kind of 1 to infinity, if you will, um, because once you get past 1, you're, you're running with everything, right? Um, unfortunately, I probably should have gone for a longer session than 20 minutes because it's kind of hard to squeeze all of this in. Uh, so I'm going to go at a reasonable pace. And uh, if you have questions at the end, I'm around and you can pick, pick me out on Twitter or something and I'm happy to answer some. Uh, I also come from somewhere where they speak very fast. So if I start speaking too fast and you want me to slow down, please just like wave at me and uh, I will. So my name is Ashley Hazel. I'm Head of Digital Technology from Hogarth Worldwide. Um, that's my Slack and sorry, my Stack Overflow and my Drupal.org names. Pretty easy to find. It's just my name. And we jump straight in and we talk about what is config and why do we want to use it. And in simple terms, we're just capturing site settings into code. Um, the great thing about this, of course, is it makes your settings uh, versionable, portable, and of course shareable, which is where we're going to get to with this in a minute. Um, in the end, it's just a bunch of YAML files, uh, YAML files that roughly represent our database dump. But uh, being separated into, file, into YAML files, we can break them up and package them up in different ways. Cool. So they are versionable, shareable, portable, dividable, reusable, and really able. So generally, config is great. And it allows us to really expand on the way that we're moving our content around, or sorry, our settings around. Mm. But where do we start with our one site? It seems kind of confusing when you start getting into documentation. Uh, and the way we generate all this is simple, sex. Of course, we mean sex. Uh, one simple drush command, and we're off and we're running. One simple drush command, there we go. Um, and then to complete the cycle, drush sim, and we're flying. We've got our config export and our config import. And really and truly, this is it. This is you up and running with uh, config. But the next question becomes, where does it all go? Right? Now, by default, it's going to go into your files directory um, under sites default files config underscore a random hash, which is great. It gets us up and running, but it's not where we want our config to be. Because our config generally can contain some sensitive information, maybe with some API keys or something in there. Maybe you don't want them to be there, but they can be there. So we add to our settings PHP this line at the bottom of config directories, um, config sync directory, and we tell it where we want to put it. And generally, we want to put it outside of our doc root in order to keep that protection. And most importantly, actually, and maybe not most importantly, but most usefully, most of us are probably excluding our default files directory from Git. We don't want all of that in there. So by removing config and putting it in a more central location, it becomes easier for us to manage it. Cool. So if we take a step back and look at this in a more conceptual way, this is basically what config is, right? We have two things. We have our active configuration that exists in our database, and we have our file system configuration with all of our YAML. Um, but there are things that we want to be specific to our environments. We don't want to have everything in there. And there's two ways to go about creating these sort of local overrides. This, I think, is how most people perceive local overrides. You have uh, your settings PHP, you put some overrides in there, um, and then when you do your import, it's going to somehow be overridden. But this isn't actually the way that it works. Um, the way it works is more like this that uh, you have runtime overrides. Um, runtime overrides being that when you do your config import, you're getting what's in your YAML files, and what you have in your settings directory is only uh, used at runtime. So when you look in your YAML, you do a new export or something, you're still going to get the old settings. You're not going to get what you've got in your settings file. And of course, we can use local settings files and dev setting files or environmental-based setting files to do those overrides as we go. But there are some things that you can and can't do with this method. You can't create new or completely remove any config that already exists because you're only altering config that 
is already in your existing YAML files. Well, you can only overwrite stuff that already exists. I sort of said that one already. Um, because of that, there, there's also some strange limitations. You can't override some theme settings for some reason. And really weirdly, you don't see your changes reflect in the UI. So whatever you have in your config YAML is what you're going to see in your UI, uh, which can become really confusing, particularly if you're trying to debug things. Um, use an example of an API key or something. If you've got your uh, sandbox API key in there and you're seeing your production one, it's, um, it's very confusing. So maybe not the most sustainable way to work with overriding things. So how do we handle that? You know what, I've jumped ahead of myself, I apologize. Um, we'll come back to a better way to handle local overrides in a moment. First off, um, there is obviously a place of where config <coughs> isn't config. And what I'm talking about here is the overlap between content and config. Um, I'm not sure if there's a word for that, something like content config, tenturation, I don't know. Uh, principal thing that I'm referring to here, obviously, is web forms. They're great. They're almost certainly part of our settings. You know, we want to essentially manage our, conf our contact forms or some special form that we've done a bunch of work to modify and uh, have some overrides on. But they're also definitely not config. We sell Drupal. One of the big selling points of Drupal is that we have this great form builder. And then our clients go and they set up their forms and they alter their forms. And we go into a deployment and we delete everything that they've done before. So, of course, there's a motto for that. In fact, when we start looking, there is a bunch of modules for this. Uh, config ignore is the one that comes out of the box straight away. Allows us to ignore whole swaths of configuration on a module by module basis as well. Uh, if you guys were in the config management 2.0 presentation yesterday, you'll know that this is becoming somewhat redundant, but at the moment this is definitely the way that you would do it. Very quickly from config ignore, we find that we have web form config ignore, which is even better. It just does some of the niceties around handling web forms. Um, you get to ignore them, but at the same time, include them. It's, uh, it's a really nice watch. I highly recommend you get a look at it. But looking at both of them, straight away we see that they're using something called config filter. And when we discover config filter, we realize, hey, maybe there's a bit more in the way of modules that can help us with config. And very quickly, we find ourselves coming to config split, which we'll come back to in just a moment. Finding that there is more in the way of uh, modules than we thought there might be, you go and have a quick search, you search for config, and boom, you're just overloaded with hundreds of modules. In fact, those 1,200 modules come up in the search. I don't think all of them are actually related to config, obviously. But just in the first couple of pages, you, know, you get a bit of a migraine. And going through some of this, you find modules that are either redundant or they're similar to one of the other modules, and you get a bit lost in where you're going. So yeah, definitely a bit of a module minefield on the go here. And generally, you can ignore most of these. There are some interesting concepts, but you have things like, um, can I see them on the screen here? Maybe not. There, there's a couple of modules here that allow you to create pull requests. So when you've got your editors or your client making changes on your production site, you can create a pull request to get those configs back into your uh, systems. And then on the other hand, you've got things like config ignore, which is, or re config read only, which is there to stop your clients from being able to do that. So these really depend on your workflow, but for the most part, you don't need them. Of course, you can't look at this without coming across features. So I have one slide on features, and it's a really simple slide. <coughs> don't use it, right? Oh, yes, a reaction. Why not? Why not? Yeah, I'm going to say why not. Um, so features was great, right? Um, could become a bit of a headache, granted, but still great. Um, but it's, it's really redundant with config management. Features is taking your settings and putting them in code. Config management is taking your settings and putting them in code. What features does, and actually it is great for development, because what Features does is it gives you a little bit of a UI to find out which config you want, dumps it in a module, and adds an extra YAML file that says you can't use my module unless you turn on Features. It's kind of pointless. By all means, use it to get yourself up and running and to learn how to create modules with config, but delete the YAML and use it as a module, because that's all it really is. 
Um, and actually, this is back to my point at the beginning, that config is dividable and packageable. You don't have to treat it as your site config. You can go and stick it in a module or a distribution or a number of other ways of packaging it up. So, flying at this, obviously. Quick recap of where we are so far. We've had a look at getting started. You need one trash command and you're away. Uh, we've had a look at the file system and the fact that you want to move it. Um, we spoke about the drush commands, and we looked at some local overrides, uh, which maybe wasn't the best option. Uh, where config and content meet, which is principally web forms, but there are some other examples, and the fact that there's a bit of a module minefield. So. Next, we need to up our game a little bit, right? And look at more sustainable overrides, because the overrides in the settings file was great for certain things, for sure. They're not what we want, generally. So that brings us all the way back to config split. Um, config split does, well, exactly what it says on the tin. Uh, it allows you to divide up your config into different packages. And the de facto example here that I think everybody does is they divide this up based on their environment, right? So if we, oh, I have more slides, I apologize. It splits into subsets. The subsets can be criteria based, and it's actually a really good point. Um, the obvious example being there, those environments. Um, but most importantly, it has the full power of config management. Unlike our settings file, where we were limited by what we could override and the fact that we can only override things. With config split, we are able to um, we're able to have full control over what we do and we don't want. And most importantly for site builders, we see the changes in the UI. Um, sorry, I'm tapping a bit fast here and I'm confusing myself. Uh, so we can create new content. We can delete content with uh, config. We don't have to just override. What we, uh, what we already have. We can override literally everything, and we see the settings in the UI. So no more red on this page here, which tells us that config split is definitely a better option than the settings file group. So going back out to our conceptual uh, overview, uh, the, the map has changed slightly, right? We have our original import-export with our active and our uh, YAML file configuration, but this time we're passing through config filter and we're splitting out our config into different packages and then re-importing them, uh, just the ones that we want. I put a little example here of what might have been in the, the, dev, uh, the dev import, and for those that don't know, which I imagine most of you do, these zeros obviously aren't uh, to disable those modules, that's not a type of dev, the zeros are weight, so you can set the weight of how your modules are included. But uh, it's a, a big thing with Split that you're able to control what you have on and what you don't have on in your different environments. Cool. So, who says that we need to name our splits local, dev, and production, or live? If we change the names, because the names really are just arbitrary, to something more like agency, client, and brand, suddenly we see that we can actually really begin to flex this system to do an awful lot more. And again, if you were in the presentation yesterday, you'll see that this is not how they intend this to be used, and they're changing the config management system, so this is, uh, you will have to change the way that we do this. But certainly with Split the way it's designed today, you can just split up your um, configuration into packages that make sense to you, and you can import them in a way that makes sense to you. If you're following this pattern, I would probably recommend that you use a profile, which in the end is just another module, right? So we can subdivide and module our content um, for things like your agency type uh, config. But certainly where it comes to generating uh, an import for a particular brand or a particular client, there's no reason why you can't use your splits to control that, particularly in a multi-site environment. But there's a problem, right? You have the site UUID which prevents you from sharing configuration from one site to another. So if you're trying to do that uh, agency, brand, client, server divide, you're going to run into the case that you, you are sharing config and it, it doesn't work. Um, 
the number one solution to that is, as I just said, you can use a profile, um, or you can fit some of your config into a module, or you can cheat and you can uh, change it, to change the site UI to be the same, which depending on what you're doing can help. But the thing is, it, it's not a problem, this, right? It's a safety net. The UUID is there to stop you accidentally wiping out a site that you didn't mean to. So I would say do this with caution. Um, it definitely works, and if you're in a multi-site, it, it's maybe something you want to do. But, yeah, it's there for a reason. It's not a problem. It's an actual safety net, so be careful if you want to do that. Cool. Um, so, a really quick example. Now, actually, I thought I was going to run out of time much faster when I ran through this. So this is a really quick example. Um, so I'll, I'll slow down a little bit. Looking at standard multi-site, we have our shared code base, right? And then, normally, we have our shared default configuration using the settings file to put it outside of um, the file system. And then we have our brands, X, and we have our brand Y, or brandy, as I like to say. And each of them contain their database and their assets, but they can also contain their own config as well, using config split. So we can uh, do our install, use our shared code base, get our shared default config, and then import the split that we require just to adjust those uh, sites ever so slightly. Um, you know, things that you might want to include in here are the obvious things like uh, your site name, um, to the modules that you have enabled, uh, to maybe some more complex things around, uh, well actually I guess modules are about as complex as it gets really, right? It's, it's actually a relatively straightforward sim and simple system when you get into uh, using it this way. So cool, that is basically that, that's all it is. Uh, very quickly, we have the contributions day and there is also a uh, review for you to leave. But that's us done, and remarkably, we have a couple of minutes to spare. Sorry if I did speak too fast or I ran through that too quickly, but uh, any questions? Do you want to come down to the microphone? Um, would there be a way to split configuration in like feature-like um, um, portions? Yes. So I'm not sure if that picked up properly. Is, is there a way to split configuration to feature-like options? Uh, and the answer to that is yes. I mean, you, you can use features to help you get going with that, but literally this is just splitting configuration into modules. Um, and once you get used to the configuration export and what the files are called, what they do, it is very simple to create those modules and to separate out your config. Something we do a great deal actually is we break things down. Sorry, we break things down uh, using paragraphs to create components, which I'm sure everybody's doing these days. But we package that up into a module, as you would with a feature. I have another question. You say before that you suggest to don't put the config file into Git. No, no. Okay. Sorry. Uh, one of the reasons you would want to move it from the files directory and possibly above the doc root is because you definitely want to have your config files in Git. Okay. Yeah. So one, one simple question. Don't you find it frustrating that uh, uh, in the end you change so little configuration? So basically maybe you even just, the only configuration you changed was you changed the, the site name. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly you do config export and you've got hundreds of files there that you know the only difference between that and what is in core and in the contrib stuff is now it has a UUID and one of the files has a new site name. Um, wouldn't it be more also interesting to, to have uh, slightly better tools that don't export needlessly so many changes uh, yes. that are not really needed? Yeah, no, no, I, I see what you mean. Your your original export, even if you just install a site and just do export, you get thousands of files yep. with absolutely relatively no bearing on you, right? Yep. Um, and it seems frustrating initially, um, and certainly something that our team has discovered or come across is if you've got a large multi-site with say 60 or 100 sites in it, you have 100 directories 
with theoretically thousands of files in them for no good reason, right? Um, but actually, I think it makes a lot of sense to have those files. It is a bit frustrating when you go first start, but once you begin to subdivide them and put your config into your modules or using splits to split them out across the brands you're working with, those exports become much smaller. And that original bulk export, you probably put into a profile or something, so you're only really dealing with it once. Yeah. I'm sorry, but we have to go back to the next session. Sure, they're about to kick us out. Can we do just one more question? Hi, I will try to do it fast. Is it possible to uh, somehow to do uh, config diff to compare what is going to be imported or exported? Yes, the UI will show you what's going to be imported or exported, so will the Drush commands. They give you a warning before you do it. Full diff. Thanks. No problem. Thank you all.